Hello, everybody. It's Marcy again from wavesofcommunication.com, and I'm here with another video. This one is a strategies video. And also, if you're watching me live, this is a live Q&A. So you are welcome in the uh, comments section to post your question about language facilitation or late talking. For those of you who are joining me for the first time, welcome and also welcome back to all of my followers and subscribers. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel because I am a language facilitation expert. I'm a consultant. I was a speech pathologist and therapist for 30 years in the system, and now I work online on my platform called wavesofcommunication.com, where I teach parents how to facilitate speech and language naturally in your home during everyday activities. And I have more than 300 videos here on my channel. Channel. I go live twice a week with live Q&A, once here on YouTube on Mondays and on Thursdays over on Facebook. I also have a Facebook group over there. I wrote a book. I have a website with a free class. There are tons of resources across my platform to help parents all over the world. And in fact, parents all over the world are using my resources to help their late talking kids start using spoken language, no matter what is causing their late talking. So I promise if you have a late talking child in your life, there is something on my channel that you're gonna enjoy. So watch a couple more videos when you're done with this one, like them, share them with your friends, because it's my mission to help as many parents as possible overcome whatever is causing your child to be stuck right now in nonverbal communication, dragging you around the house, yelling and screaming, tantrums. Maybe they're in therapy and the therapy's not working. That's really what happens most of the time when parents find me or you don't have access to therapy due to the pandemic. It doesn't matter because parents are the best language facilitators and strategies like those that I'm going to share with you on this video will prove it because I promise if you follow the strategies that I'm going to talk about today in your home for one week, you will see a difference in your child, in their listening, in their focus, and maybe even in their trying to say words. So tune in because these strategies are amazing. This, in fact, this series of strategies that I'm going to tell you today is on every custom language facilitation plan that I give to families. It's that important to start your day with language facilitation and end your day too. Those are different set of strategies. So let's get into today talking about the strategies. I'm going to give you five main strategies that you can use during your morning routine that will help you facilitate new speech and language, okay? All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to pull up some graphics for you here is what I call this morning snuggle time. So morning snuggle time is perfect to activate your language facilitation zone connection. And this connection is very, very important. If you've ever heard me talk about the language facilitation zone, that is when you are focused on the same idea as your child. And what happens is first thing in the morning, everybody wakes up on their own from dream state into our reality. We wake up wherever we are. You might sleep in the bed with your kids. Your kids might be in a different room. They might even be in a different part of the house. It's different for every family. And what you do in this morning snuggle time, it's the important time to establish the connection together because you wake up on your own, you look around and you find those around you. So this morning time of saying good morning, spending some time in the bed, if you climb in with your child or your child climbs in with you or you pull them out of their crib or wherever they are and you snuggle in the chair, you have a little morning time to really connect. And during this time, what you want to do is just talk about how good you feel together, how happy you are to have a new day together, and that you're excited about talking. The first thing when you come 
come out of bed in the morning is talk about how you're excited today to talk with your child about talking. I can't wait to teach you more words. I'm going to say all kinds of words for you to listen to and learn while we go through our day because I am a language facilitator and I am working every day to help you learn talking. Speech and language facilitation doesn't only happen on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. when you show up for speech therapy or the Zoom call or whatever. It happens all day, every day. And if you want to be a true language facilitator, you own the job from the moment you wake up until the time you go to bed. So in the morning snuggle time is all about establishing the foundations. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to encourage you to listen to me, learn from me. And whenever you try to use spoken language, I'm going to encourage that model it for you and show you the right way to talk because today is a next day another whole day that we have to facilitate language together when you share that with your child from the very beginning of the day it sets your intention not only does your child come into the expectation of my parents gonna help me learn to talk but it also puts you in the mindset of I am a language facilitator, right? Because if you wake up in the morning thinking about all the 50 things that you have to do that day and the language facilitation isn't in the front of your mind when you first wake up, guess what happens? All those other 50 things you have to do, they pile in on top of your intention to facilitate language, especially if you're home with your child during the pandemic, right? Everybody's home and you've got to do all the other stuff that you used to run around outside and do here in the house. And your child doesn't know when is my time, when is your time. And the more things you have to do, the more time spends, you spend away from talking with your child. So from the very beginning, make sure that you've got that plan set and you intend to follow it from your whole day. All right. Now, the next thing that you're going to move into is what I'm calling this demonstration of washing up skills. So see how this dad is showing her exactly how he's washing it. So in this case, a lot of kids will take that toothbrush and shove it in their mouth and bite on it. And that could be what's happening with this little girl. And she wasn't very good at brushing the front of her teeth. So what this dad is doing is he's showing her exactly how to do it herself. And while, she, while he's doing that, he's modeling natural sentences that the child might say about the experience. Let's watch it one more time. So here's dad. Look at me. I'm brushing the front of my teeth. Wow, you're doing a great job too. A mom who's observing this could talk about dad. See how he's showing her brush back forth all across the front. Get the tops and the bottoms. He's giving all the details about how to brush teeth. It's an educational experience, not just a we got to hustle to get through. He took the time to stop pause, show her. And if his mind was all about, let's get the toothbrushing done so we can move on with our day, he wouldn't be using that opportunity, not just to show her how to brush her teeth, but also to let her understand the language around teeth brushing. We need toothpaste. It's in the front of your mouth. Don't bite on the toothbrush. You know, these cues that he's giving her in little sentences with language facilitation talk, nice, slow talking that the child can understand while you're going through these washing up. So wash up together. Don't get up early and wash your child move out of this where you're snuggling and you're talking about your language facilitation. The first language facilitation thing you do is wash up together. You know, you can flip this around with the next one, which is getting dressed, but it, whatever you move into, you're just kind of transitioning your child from one activity into the other. And so this washing up is part of everybody's routine. And instead of just getting it done, use it to talk about the, the situation. If your child struggles, like this little girl was struggling with teeth brushing and you have to do some extra teaching, take the time then to do the extra teaching. And if it's a chronic problem, there's no better time to solve that problem than a little bit every single day. You're not going to spend 25 minutes with it. You're going to do the best you can teaching through what your child can tolerate on a daily basis. So snuggle time can be two to three minutes. 
washing up time is five to 10 minutes. I mean, it's not that complicated. You're washing up, you're brushing your teeth, you're getting cleaned up, you're making sure you don't smell, right? All of that stuff for the day. And you talk about all those things. We've got a little checklist in the morning, making sure we don't smell. What do we have to do with our bodies before we go put our clothes on? There's a little checklist you gotta do. You have to do the same checklist demonstrate as you do those morning things for yourself, how they are different for you, how you feel about it when you do it. You feel better after you brush your teeth. You got all the broccoli out. You got all the bread out, right? All of those things that you talk about with your child about the experience. It's not just get the toothbrush, put the toothpaste, stick it in your mouth. Those are directions. When we talk about the experience, we talk about, wow, your teeth are shiny now and your body doesn't smell bad and you you know what I mean you're ready for your day we're ready to go put clothes on your body squeaky clean because that's what you think in your head right when you get ready in the morning am I ready to go out is my body ready to put clothes on Ooh, maybe not I stink I gotta clean up that's how we all think when we get ready in the morning, when we wash up our bodies. And this doesn't have to be a morning routine washing up you can do this no matter what time you wash up if you don't go to bed stinky then do this at night right? With your whole body, but you brush your teeth in the morning, you wash your face in the morning, you get cleaned up. So your body is ready for the day. And that's what you talk about, how you're getting your body ready, not the jobs, the skills, the whatever. Those are on top of the real experience of washing up. Why? Why are we washing up? When you talk about the why, you're not giving directions. You're giving nice language models to your kids. If you find yourself asking questions and telling your child, get the brush, put the thing, stick it in your mouth, do it faster, do it slower, do it this way, that way, the other way, without talking about the experience, you're missing out on the real language that your child needs to learn other places, okay? These simple directions to get through the job will just get you through the job. It won't help you find fun, gentle speech that you can use elsewhere. That's the difference between speech therapy techniques and language facilitation techniques. We're working on language the kids can use other places outside of the bathroom. So we don't talk about just toothbrushing. We talk about how toothbrushing makes your teeth pretty and other things make your teeth pretty too. And other things are pretty on your body and shiny and clean, right? And that's why all the language mixes together. Okay. So that was number two was talk about the functional things that you do in your life that washing up kinds of things. All right. So the next one that we're going to move into is where we're getting into um, something that I want another warning. Okay. So I've got a little graphic here I want to show you. And this is one that's really, really common about getting dressed. Are you missing out on language facilitation opportunities out of habits? Because this little guy might have previously provided some resistance to getting dressed. And so they've got a TV on and dad's got him dressed. And now dad's trying to cue him to fix his pants. And guess what? He said no and whacked his dad right? Because distracting kids while dressing to speed up the process or distract them away or do whatever, it actually blocks the connection during the most personal moments of your existence. Let's watch this video again. So you can see this little guy, look, he's looking at the TV. Dad's not talking to him at all. He's physically taking his foot and putting it in there. He didn't even give him direction about it. Now, you know, he's got him to stand up. He's pulling up his pants. The kid's not even listening. And dad's now dad's trying to get him to do something do fix your pants whack right because what's happening here is they're not in the same zone they're not in the same language facilitation zone the child's head is i'm gonna watch this thing and let you manipulate my body while i get dressed like a puppet and i'll let you do whatever you want as long as i can see this thing on the tv dad's mindset is just let me do whatever I want, right? So it's not, let's do, let's get dressed together. Let's think about getting dressed. Let's think about how you get dressed, why you get dressed, what clothes you get, wear, any of that. It is literally, I got to get your clothes on because we've got to go somewhere else. This video I showed you is a means to an end that the parent has and the kid has in mind. Let's just get dressed because the kid's idea is I just want to watch a video. I don't care if I've got clothes on at all. And the dad is like, you got to get clothes on. I don't care how you get clothes on. They just have to get on because I want to take you out and do something else. They're both thinking about something besides putting the clothes on. And what's the activity going on? The clothes are being put on. It's a disconnect. 
Do you understand? So that's what you need to understand if you are literally puppeting your child through things. You are missing out on the chance to talk to them about these activities. So if your life is so busy that you don't have time to get your child dressed in the morning, then you need to rearrange your schedule so that you do. And if your child struggles with you about getting dressed, this kind of pushing through it and avoiding the activity is never going to result in the functional, natural, my kid getting themselves dressed, taking responsibility for getting dressed, and learning to talk about it elsewhere in their life. This little boy was quite old to be allowing someone to get them dressed, right? There is a big mental dynamic going on in that situation that builds up over time. And if this is going on in your life, if that scene is familiar, where you have to force your kid through things, push your kid through things, do things for your child in order to get them done. Like my kid's not going to get dressed unless I put the video on and do it. My kid's not going to eat unless I put the video on and do it then you're, you have given up and missed out on the chance to teach your child. You might be relying on therapists or grandma or somebody else, maybe your child to learn it on their own, but they're certainly happy. This child was certainly happy to look at the TV while someone else was puppeting and putting their clothes on. So this whole morning routine is no joke about both the opportunity it provides in your ability to teach functional language and the opportunity it provides for you to move away from and enable your child to be reliant on you. And then when you need them to be responsible, like this maybe five or six-year-old child was, needing to be responsible in their life, you can't expect it from your child because you haven't facilitated it, okay? So enough about the lecture. I definitely did want to let you guys know about that. Okay. So I get it. I get how it, it's a big deal, but it's really important for me to share that information with you. All right. So the other thing that I want to move into now, moving away from that, if that's not happening in your home, is here's how to get started. So the first step is to allow your child to choose their own clothing. And what you do is you have to talk about their choice. Now look at that beautiful flower dress. And you also have to honor their decisions. So let's say this little girl chose this dress in November, right? It's got no sleeves. It's got a real thin material. Obviously, she's at the store. But I wanted to use this picture as an example so that you can see how sometimes kids will choose clothing items for themselves that are not what you would have chosen for them, okay? It's not the same. So if it's November and you wake up in the morning and you hear on the news or you heard the night before that, you know, it's got a cold front coming in and there's going to be new weather coming and you want your child to wear something really warm and fuzzy and they are choosing their favorite short sleeve dress, right? There's going to be maybe a difference in what you think the child should wear. Here is where you have an opportunity, right? You have a big opportunity when your ideas don't match with your child's because it's going to happen a lot. It's going to happen for the rest of your life. Isn't it how life goes? How many times in your life have you had a disagreement with your parents' ideas, right? And it, depending on how old you are, it starts pretty young, right? Little kids have very strong ideas about what they want to wear, especially if they have sensory preferences. So here's an example. Ben, my friend Ben, his mom is even going to be writing a book about the fact that he would only wear these rain boots. And it didn't matter. Summer, winter for like two years or whatever, only rain boots, wouldn't wear tennis shoes, wouldn't wear, and it was prohibiting from, you know, running and, and stuff. But he had this fear, this OCD fear about getting his feet wet. And so even though it was 100 degrees out and, you know, it wasn't appropriate for him to be wearing boots, he always wore these boots. And his mom honored his decision because they talked about why. And she gave up her expectation of him wearing what she thinks he should be wearing and helped him accommodate what he wanted to wear with the outfit. So made sure he wore short pants if he wore these long boots in the summer so that his legs wouldn't get so hot. He, she, you know, in this little girl's short sleeve dress, make sure that there, you have to have a sweater on top of it. And this is where negotiation 
comes in. So for late talkers who are using single words and you say, come on, it's time to get dressed. And they say dress and it's a short sleeve dress. Instead of saying, no, you can't wear that dress. Try something like, wow, that dress is beautiful. I know you chose it because you like flowers and Today, if you want to wear that dress, we've got to pair it with this sweater because it's really cold outside. That's a win-win, right? No, not no, you can't wear it, but figure out a way. Use it as a layer, put something on top of it, put something under it, put, you know, wear pants with it if she can't wear, you know, a dress at school, whatever, If you can make these little accommodations and talk about the process with your child, it is a win-win because they are you, they're empowered to use their language to talk about what they want, what they love, why their ideas are, why they chose to wear it. Because if you can't figure it out, then that's your job is to get in there and figure out why did she choose this dress? Why does he wear these boots? That's what made those moms successful and allowed them to say yes, because late talkers do not like to hear no, because it sets them off and they don't understand the why. So when you explain why we wear the things we wear and why we don't, and that was my next thing. So actually, we're going to get into part of it. So let your child choose what they have. I've kind of jumped ahead with my strategies. Let's move to the next strategy so that we just talk about while you're getting dressed, right? Because while you're getting dressed, you need to take your time. And this is what we talked about before, explaining every little step. So instead of like that kiddo who um, was unable to do his pants on his own and he told his dad, you know, can you fasten this for me, is kind of his way of saying, no, I don't want to do it. You did the rest. Do that too. That kind of thing. Always help your child. Always help them. Anytime your child hesitates to do something in a skill, instead of being the, you can do it, go for it, Let be the parent, be the teacher, be the facilitator. Step in and go, oh, I see. Are you having a little trouble? You want me to help you with that? Come on, join me and help me. So, you know, like in this other video, let me show you this again. The mom over here, I mean, these parents are putting on tricky clothing. It's probably a dress-up occasion. And they've got to button these buttons. They're really hard to button. There's no way this little guy over here is going to be able to button his buttons. And mom and dad are facilitating. And look, she's got him over here holding up his trousers. She's telling him, hold them up sideways so that I can fasten the strap for you. And it's a combination activity. Just give your child a little part, an easy part that they can do to participate with it. Okay. Hey, I know the fastener is hard for you, but if you hold the sides, I'll fasten it. And guess what? They will look right at the fastener while you fasten it. And you do it really slow. You just do it like this. Twist the thing. Push the hole in the the button in the hole. Zip, 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 zip. Like that. They're going to watch you and watch you and watch you. And instead of you saying try it yourself and struggle while they uh, 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 struggle through it, You're going to be right there and they're going to tell you, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. And when that happens, then you won, right? Because you taught the skill that you wanted and you facilitated through it. So anytime your child struggles with clasps, fasteners, pulling their arm through, pulling their shirt down, you see them spontaneously undressing. Instead, if you don't want them to spontaneously undress, like a lot of kids will do outdoors to go pee or whatever. That's happened to one of my clients. Instead of just talking about the fact that they're undressing and saying, go boy, you can struggle through it. Allow and help them figure out why are they dressing and undressing? What's going on surrounding this thing? How can I help you? Wow, you want to get undressed because something's going on. It's not just a random thing. Kids don't do these things for random. It's all communication. Every single behavior is communication. All right. So now we've made it through three of these tips. The first one is the morning snuggle time where you initiate language facilitation. The second one is your morning wash up time where you demonstrate how you wash up and clean up together. The third one is let your child choose their own clothing and talk about why we wear these clothing. And then the next one is any while they're facilitating get dressed, you talk about the process. So they're 100% involved with you. Never dressing your child without them being involved. And if they don't want to get dressed, you got to find out why and help it become an easy process for them. Yeah, maybe they don't like to get dressed because you force them to do it. 
or because they struggle through it and you don't help them. If the process became easier and happier and more fun and functional by a teaching, they will learn to do it and take responsibility because that's what you want. You want your children to develop this independent responsibility to do these things for themselves and talk to you about it if they struggle, when they struggle, because they're going to struggle. Because that's how life goes. We struggle till we learn, till we don't struggle anymore, and then we struggle with the next level thing. And that's how all of this goes. And every single day you see your child evolve because I promise you the day one of the first week that you do these strategies will not be the same as day seven of these strategies. Okay. All right. As we move into the last two, I just want to remind everybody that this is live Q and a, if you're watching me live. So if you want to say hello or whatever, post a comment and let me know your question and I'll get to it when I finish with these five strategies. All right. So let's see, moving on into the next one, we are going to, I'm going to show you another graphic where we talk again about talking about why. So there are different times of year. There is special clothing that we have to wear. Um, here in North America, it's starting to get cold. A lot of kids don't want to wear hats. A lot of kids are not excited about wearing jackets and that kind of stuff. Or as the situation changes, your child could want to keep wearing their jacket and boots, even when the weather's not appropriate anymore. They want to carry their umbrella every day, ba- all of that stuff. This is the strategy where we talk about that negotiation and why we wear these outfits and why we do because it's very cold outside and remember if you want your child to wear a hat then you need to wear a hat if you want your child to wear gloves and scarves and bundle all up and you put all those things and then you just throw your light jacket and jump in the car because you aren't affected by the cold that's going to be a disconnect for your child they have to see in you the functional behavior and communication that you expect from them you can't do one thing with them and a different thing for yourself that's a disconnect in the language facilitation zone everybody's on the same page and that's why both of these parents were working with both of these kids to make sure they had their hats on and she gave them responsibility watch for your hat this is your hat these are your gloves my parents used to have to clip on to my hand because I wasn't very good at keeping track of my gloves and they were very good at reminding me when I lost my gloves. But that was what you do. And this is what you do because otherwise your kids don't understand that they are responsible for keeping their heads warm and their hands warm. And if they don't want to wear gloves, show them how to put their hands in their pockets. Why? Because that's how you get your hands warm. Because if you don't wear gloves, how do you keep your hands warm? You stuff them in something, right? If you don't have gloves, show your kids how and why we do these things. Don't just tell them, put your gloves on. If you see them obviously shivering with their hands, then you definitely want to remind them. So that's how it goes, right? So Lucia, hola, hola, hello from Argentina. Thank you for joining me today. Like I said, if you have any questions, anybody, just post them in the comments. All right. So the next thing about getting dressed, and this is the, uh, goes with that negotiation strategy I was talking about is about masks, okay? So here is the thing about new language, new anything, right? Kids are always gonna test boundaries with new rules that they have. So here's this little guy, look, his mom says, don't take your mask off. And the first thing he does is pull it off and say, hi, look, I got it, here it is, hi, I took it off. And now she's directing his focus towards a functional activity with his hands, washing his hands, doing something to keep him busy and away from his mask. And he even learned, this little guy, in that short period of time, how to talk with it instead of take it off to say hello. He learned because his mom got his hands busy with hand washing or doing something like that, not talking about the mask. Because if you... Give your child a mask and put it on. And the first thing you say is don't take off the mask. They don't understand the don't and the no. Remember, lay talkers don't like to hear that stuff. Most kids don't like to hear don't and no. In fact, they tune it out. So instead of focusing on the negative, the thing that you don't want to happen, you must focus on the positive, the thing you want to happen. And don't even say, put your mask on, keep your mask on. That's not, that's still focusing on the mask. 
We need to take the focus away from the mask because the disconnect in this situation is the kid's focus was potentially on something else. The mom's focus was on the mask. She was keeping the child in the focus on the mask, but she expected him to leave it alone. And that's a disconnect. When you talk about something, then that's how it goes. That's how it goes. So, Vinu, hi, Vinu. Don't worry. The video is live. It's going to be all great. As soon as, you, um, as soon as you watch on the replay, you'll be able to see everything. So, thanks for joining me live, Vinu. Um, yeah, so this is really important about masks. Teach your child about it. Talk about it, put it on, talk about why we wear them, keep the germs out, yada, yada, yada. But then it needs to become natural. It needs to become functional. It needs to just become part of what you put on, like your hat. And you have the same responsibility for keeping track of your hat or your mittens or whatever that you're able to, or not, in my case, right? I lose my mask all the time. I've got to have a good place that I put it, that I always know where I have it so that I can go out in public properly. And it's a new thing that every Everybody has to learn and it's going to take a little time with every family. If you focus on mask, 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 mask all the time, after a year, a year and a half or two years of wearing masks, which we're potentially looking at in the world, you know, requirements, mandates, schools and everything even, depending on how old your child is, it's going to be really, really important that you make mask wearing just as second nature as brushing our teeth and wearing gloves and hats in cold weather. All right. That's how it goes. It must be that way. And part of your morning routine is when you get dressed and you go out, a mask is part of your required clothing out of the house. And you talk about when and where and all of that. So I wanted to include that about masks, all right? And then the now moving on to the fifth thing, the fifth strategy that I have is to breakfast together. Breakfast means break your fast. The first food or nutrition that you take in in the morning, when you do it together with your family, after you've gotten dressed, after you've settled down, after you've done something like that, that and you talk about your day, but before you start getting into, we're going to do this, 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 the weather is this, 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 you've got to go to school this, this, this day. The most important thing after you break your, break your fast together is you talk about and celebrate your family, right? It is a new day. It's, yeah, busy maybe sometimes. We got a lot of things to do. But every day is precious, right? And every day you want to be easy, happy, safe, and fun with your late talker. You want them to be nice. You want them to be easy. So break your fast together. Look, get up a half an hour early in the morning. You know, I've got parents who just making that small adjustment. I know it's still dark and I know the days are short here in North America and how all that's going on. And that's how it goes if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. The days are getting shorter. But the, the, the time to be inside with your family and snuggling is also coming too. We're coming up for holiday time where we're not going to be able to visit with friends and neighbors. And, and a lot of these social things in the world are going to be closing down. And it's going to be really important from now moving forward for the rest of your time during pandemic to be with your kids alone. You're going to be with them in the house. You're not going to have a lot of visitors and friends um, the way you used to, especially this holiday season. It's going to be a lot different than before. And we're coming up into that time. We're making plans. Make plans for hunkering in with your kids. Make plans for staying time at home. Slow your day. Stretch out your morning so the morning time comes. And if you've got to get up a little extra time in the morning, then plan a nap and siesta in the day. And that's how a lot of people do it in areas in, you know, of the world when they have longer days stretched out. It's okay. You're at home. An afternoon nap is just fine. And if you wake up, you know, all of that kind of stuff. You can do this. You can do this, everybody. Your morning routine is very, very important. A very super great way to facilitate language. And I hope that these five strategies, with extra caveats, of course, will help you. Um, I hope the lecture wasn't too severe because, listen, Habits get in the way of language facilitation, and that is really it. It's not physical problems. It's not the outside influences. All the things that people typically blame for the kinds of issues they experience every day at home. My kid won't get dressed. My kid won't eat. My kid won't get out of bed. My kid won't go to bed. All of those issues are completely 100% solvable yourself at home with the right guidance. They absolutely are. 
And if you can't figure it out through these videos, that's when you might want to look into coaching. And if you're interested in working with me as a coach, you like the kind of advice that I provide on these videos, then you can visit me at wavesofcommunication.com. The link is in the description. You can visit um, Amazon and pick up my book, If It Isn't Fun, It Isn't Fun, Teach Your Child to Talk Faster Than Speech Therapy, and try out the strategies yourself. Like I said, I have a free class. I have um, an online course. I have all resources available for parents on every budget to teach your child how to talk faster than speech therapy using natural speech no matter how old they are no matter what's causing them to be late talking parents are the best language facilitators parents all over the world are proving it and you can prove it too for yourself all right i'm not seeing any more questions thanks again for joining me everybody please visit my website to learn more like this video subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all on my next video. Bye for now.